Hello, welcome to Venture Capital with me, Katie Pilbeam. This week, Britain's Chancellor George Osborne warns that the UK may leave the EU if reforms do not take place. We'll get global reaction from the former leaders of Italy and the Czech Republic, who have very different opinions on Europe. There were plenty of international politicians here in Moscow this week because it was the Guider Economic Forum, which I went along to. I caught up with the world-renowned economist Jeffrey Sachs on tax evasion and the games still being played on Wall Street. That's all still to come. But let's start with Mr. George Osborne because he ruffled a few EU feathers this week by warning that the UK could be forced to quit if the organisation does not reform. And here's what the Chancellor wants exactly, the, the main points. Now, he has been frustrated by what he sees as the stalling of the free trade deal between the EU and the US by EU lawmakers themselves and thinks Europe is being shown up by economies like China and India. Now, the British public will get to decide in 2017 in a referendum if they want to continue as a member of the EU. Now, the main sticking points for the British people are immigration, social security and interference from Brussels in British law, especially when it comes to human rights. Now, the Czech Republic is in a similar situation to Britain in the fact that it's in the EU, but it doesn't have the euro as its national currency. So I asked the former president of the country at the Guider Forum what he makes of Osborne's warning. More or less agree with such a statement. Uh, the issue is whether whether the EU is able to make a change, not just cosmetic changes, but a fundamental transformation of the economic, social, political system. I am rather skeptical in this respect. So, so uh, I think that to quit, to leave the EU, is definitely one legitimate possibility for countries like Great Britain or Czech Republic. Or, or, or any other. That, that's my position. And another question would be whether I believe uh, that, that the British conservative politicians mean it seriously. I'm afraid not, so, so that's another story. Well, if indeed they are serious, and the former Italian Prime Minister Mario Monti, who is also here in Moscow, a keen supporter of both the EU and the Euro, he said that Britain leaving would affect the progress of the reforms, which he also thinks are necessary. What I think uh, Europe does need is more economic reform, is uh, uh, a greater um, role for markets, for competition in markets, for market openness. And the paradox is that uh, if the UK stays firmly at the core of the EU, this will help the reform process in Europe. So, um, I, 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 as an Italian, as a European, I do wish that the UK stays uh, in and on, uh, but uh, and, and if it does not, uh, uh, the whole reform process in Europe will be less vigorous. But uh, Mr. Claus, who is a self-confessed Eurosceptic, has a very different attitude to Mr. Monty and doesn't seem too concerned about Britain leaving or indeed any other nation for that matter. I am absolutely sure that, that Europe, exist, Europe existed with six countries, then with nine countries, then with 12 countries, then 15, then 25, 27, 28. All the time the idea was that that's okay, so why not to have instead of 28, 26 countries again possible. Now, while we had Mr. Osborne grumbling about the EU, he'll no doubt be smiling at Total, set to totally transform the UK fracking industry. Now, the French oil company will become the first international heavyweight to invest in the UK's shale ambition, injecting $47 billion. But environmentalists warn that fracking is dangerous and polluting. Advocates say it makes energy more affordable, creates jobs and cuts consumption of, of dirtier coal.
Let's quickly have a look at how it's uh, extracted so we can see how the environmental issues come into it. Okay, so we've got drilling um, deep, deep into these shale gas rocks, actually more than a kilometre down into the ground. Then we have the chemicals that come into it, which is mixed with sand and water as well, pumped uh, intense uh, rays into these shale gas intense pressures. And what this does is it opens up these fissures and this is where the contamination comes into it and how the water can be affected just there. So bear that in mind, we've also got the air pollution as well concerns too. That's how it works. Now, I spoke to Rachel Kite from the World Bank Group. She was here in Moscow as well. She was at the forum and she was here to discuss climate change and the environment. So I asked her about the potential dangers. There's a lot that we don't know uh, about the methane impact of, of fracking and so um, that has to be properly understood and properly accounted for because methane is a forcing uh, emission that it, it, makes, uh, it makes global warming happen faster. Um, but I think that the, uh, the issue really is depending on the geology. For some countries, they have the water necessary to, uh, to engage in the fracking. For others, they don't. So for countries, this is, some countries, this is an option. For other countries, it's more difficult. I think the big question for the industry overall is, is this a short-term or a long-term phenomenon? Uh, already, you're beginning to see the productivity of the fracking sector reducing, uh, which would indicate that perhaps the reserves aren't quite as large as everybody once thought they were. And we're going to stay with the topic of shell gas in Russian corporate news because it seems like Russia is the latest country to be jumping on the fracking bandwagon. Yes, because Shell and Gazprom Neft have started testing the shell potential of the Bazanov formation in Russia's western Siberia. The Bazanov is believed to have the largest shale formation anywhere in the world. If successful, the company's shareholders will make a decision about moving to a large-scale development in the region. And the Russian financial VTB group has severed ties with credit rating agency Fitch Ratings. It accuses the agency of a lack of professionalism, producing ratings without access to internal documents or financial reports. VTB's rating was recently downgraded to triple B. And talking of Russian banks, Investbank was a billion dollars short of capital when it had its license revoked a month ago. The bank reportedly only had half as much capital as it had claimed. Now, one topic that has unified global leaders is tax evasion. Now, for decades, the rich has been storing their millions and billions in tax havens to avoid huge tax bills. And up until the financial crisis erupted, politicians, well, they didn't seem too bothered, actually, about the whole thing. Fast forward five years, with recession, battered national coffers in desperate need of a fill-up, tax evasion is now a top priority for the entire world. Now, I spoke to leading economist Jeffrey Sachs on the problem of tax havens, which he says is a scandalous system. But we started talking about the lessons that haven't been learnt from the financial crash. In uh, Wall Street, the same games are being played as before, uh, the same financial speculation. The political power of these firms remains intact, which is amazing because even you take a firm like uh, JP Morgan, Almost every week it pays new fines on uh, actions of financial fraud, illegality. But this is week after week after week. It shows that it was, I often wonder, was it doing anything legal? Because uh, it's paid so many fines, it's done so much wrong, and yet it's still so politically influential. Uh, and not just that one, but Wall Street as a whole. So I'm not at all satisfied. Our system uh, in the United States is a quite corrupted political system. Uh, corrupted because our politicians spend in total billions of dollars on their campaigns every two-year cycle. Uh, now a major and a uh, two-year cycle at the uh, federal level in the United States, maybe six or seven or eight billion dollars. Well, where are the politicians uh, getting that money? They're getting it from rich people and from big companies. And 
they're not getting it for free. They're getting it because they're listening to the rich and to the corporations, not to the needs of the average uh, pop person in the population. Let's talk about tax evasion because the global community has come together and managed to sign uh, various regulations to clamp down on it. Uh, specifically, I'm talking about Switzerland uh, saying they're going to be giving information, uh, finance banking information to U.S. Uh, authorities on citizens. Uh, where do you stand on that? Is enough being done then to clamp down on, on tax havens? I think that the world is waking up to the scandal of the international tax situation. These tax islands, or treasure islands as they're called, the British Virgin Islands, the Cayman Islands, Bermuda, this is a shocking abuse of the global trust. Why are there trillions of dollars in these little islands. Well, of course, this is to evade taxes. This is to evade responsibility. This is to evade legality. And who creates this? Not those little islands, uh, but uh, the uh, U.S. government by approving these uh, arrangements, the U.K. government, because after all, these are uh, British territories. Uh, and I believe that these are abuses that need to stop, not only uh, exchange of information, that's not enough, but stopping the abuse itself of letting very, very rich people from the United States or Europe or mega companies like, Am like uh, Apple or Google uh, take their profits and instead of paying the taxes that they should pay as decent citizens, put them tax-free in these tax havens with the approval of the politicians, of course, who get the tax, uh, who uh, use this to uh, generate campaign contributions. So this is a scandalous system that really needs to stop not just some exchange of information. There's been a little progress, but we have a long way to go because it's estimated that there are maybe $20 trillion of assets booked in these tax havens around the world. That's an abuse of the public trust. Now that's a wrap for today's Venture Capital and I'm going to be heading to Switzerland for the Davos Economic Forum next week. I'm going to be covering the event live on the news for you. I'm also going to be tweeting about it all week long, all the latest Davos actions. So join me on that one. But in the meantime, have a great week. Goodbye.